Hello everyone, this video is the start of a tutorial series in which we are going to learn how to develop experiments with Otri. And in this video I want to talk a little bit about what Otri is, how it works and what kind of experiments we can develop with Otri. So, first of all, Otri is a framework that is designed to develop online experiments, which means that subjects are going to interact with our experiments through a web browser like Firefox or Google Chrome. And the big upside of this is that Otri allows you to develop experiments that run on almost any platform, so on phones, on laptops, on desktop computers, on iPads, and anything basically that has a web browser. And it is very flexible in the sense that you can use the same experiment online and in the lab. Really the big upside is that if you want to run a social science experiment and you're not sure yet in which kind of context you're going to run it, if you develop an O3, you probably can run it in any context that you can imagine without ever needing to change anything about the code. And the way that O3 works is that you're, we are going to develop our experiments using the Python programming language. So basically the, the back end behind the websites the subjects are going to see is going to be based on Python code. And then we are also going to need a couple of other programming languages in order to work with our experiments. And these are going to be mainly HTML and CSS, which we are going to use to style our website and to design the user interface. And potentially also JavaScript which we might need if we want to have dynamic websites in which things change a lot without the subjects having to reload the website. So this might sound a bit difficult, but the good thing is that we don't actually need to be an expert in any of these languages. So the knowledge required for a simple experiment is very basic and you can start after having spent maybe one or two hours on, on learning Python. But this is a necessary investment, so you will have to spend a little bit of time familiarizing yourself with Python before going into O3. So if you haven't worked with Python at all, I would suggest that you go through a small Python tutorial before starting the next video in this series. And I will provide links in the video description to a couple of different ways how to learn basic Python. I also want to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of O3 to help you decide whether O3 is the right framework for your experiment. And one of the big advantages that I've already mentioned is that it's very flexible. So if you have an experiment developed in O3, you can use it to run an experiment in the lab, you can use it online, you can use it in the fields on people's phones. Basically there's no, no limit to the context in which you could deploy your experiment. And second big advantage is that because O3 runs with Python in the background and you have access to JavaScript. Basically there's no limit to what you can implement in Otri because you have these powerful programming languages that allow you to code anything that can be implemented on a computer. And another big advantage is that you have absolute control over the user interface because in the end what you are doing is you're developing websites that the participants open in their web browser. So any kind of design that is possible on a website is also possible for an O3 experiment, which allows for very modern looking and beautiful user experiences. So the big disadvantages are basically that O3 is a lot more complicated than alternatives, such as Zetri for offline experiments or Qualtrics for online experiments. So you, you will need to put a lot more initial effort before your first experiment runs and you need a basic understanding of Python to start working with O3. And finally, once you're done with your experiment, you need to deploy it to a web server, which is not extremely difficult, but can also be a bit challenging if you don't have any experience with things like this. Before we move on to the next video, in which I'm going to tell you how to install O3, there are two things that I briefly want to talk about. First, O3 recently received an update that changed the way that code is written a little bit. And my videos here still follow the old method of writing code. So when you install O3, you will need to do it a little bit different compared to what I'm going to tell you in the next video. So when you watch this video, check out the comment section and in there I'm gonna describe the one command that you need to enter differently compared to what I say in the video. Second, 
I recently created a course on how to develop O3 on Udemy. And in this course, there will be all the videos that you can find here on YouTube, as well as a lot of other videos that cover different topics. So you might want to check out that as well and decide whether you want to learn O3 with my videos here on YouTube or whether you want to enroll in the Udemy course. That was all that I wanted to talk about in this video and I hope you're excited to start learning O3 and see you in the next video.